Well, 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 witches, we are back with another episode of The Witching Hour. Oh, my God. Ooh. Here we are. We are about to start reviewing episode three of the Boulet the Brothers Boulet Dracula. Brothers, Dracula. Oh, my gosh. Honey, Hosa, how are you doing today? It is what time in Seoul, so, South Korea? I'm so good. It is currently 1.42 p.m. Um, in Love Seoul, it. South Korea. And what time is it in New York? Because I cannot do math for the life of me. It is 11.42 p.m. the day before you. Isn't that crazy? That is so crazy. Time zones are so crazy. Time zones are crazy. Wow. And today, my lovelies, my uglies, we are joined by a very special, sexy, sexy guest. We have the... the and if you're Yes. If you're watching Not at home, can. you can it's see we did, a little, um, we did a little... We did a little... I did Matt's makeup today, and he's giving you sort of... You know, it was going to be like a ghost pirate, but he is looking a little lion-y. It's a little... My Leo ass. side is popping through. Oh, popping, we're, popping. We're, we're all in blonde, so that's good. At least we're matching at something, because yeah, I was period. actually going to... And, and if you can... So I was actually going to put on a ghost look. I was going to put this um, dress oh. from Titan that I wore. Oh, cool. uh, I, yes. I wore that. And I actually won that challenge, by the way. Period. <laughs> uh, for any of y'all who care, uh, I won that challenge as the ring, um, uh, Sadako from the ring. But Period. I couldn't find the wig that goes with it. So I just put on some bullshit. And that's what y'all going to get. And... I don't pay. I, I don't get paid to do this. So <laughs> you know what you're. You know what you are giving me your version of the Countess from AHS Hotel, right? You know like what? That's oh, right. that's what I'm getting for you from you. And you know what? I did think about the, um, the American Horror Story season while watching this episode. I was Perfect. like, this is giving very AHS Hotel. We love that. Um, I love it. I do. Matt, what was your insp- Matt did my makeup. What was your inspiration for my makeup? Um, like Vic, you have like a nice Victorian face. Mm, oh, like very <laughs> thin sickly. and white and sickly. <laughs> so I thought, you, you know what? Let's a just sickly Victorian child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? Let's just bruise you up a little Love bit, it. give you a little gangrene, yeah. and add some blue lips. It's so good, actually. I'm like looking at it like I thought you did it yourself. No, Matt is really good. Matt, what did you say? Yeah, he was no, like, I'm like, I did not know about. Th- yeah, no, I did not know. Yeah, Mac. He worked at Mac for. I three worked years. at Mac for a long time. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Really? Yeah, they fired me for um, smelling like alcohol all the time. <laughs> Damn. It's I mean, what a way to go, that. you know? Yeah. Well, I was young. And you're I like, what party. do you mean? And you have a bottle in your hand. <laughs> well, we'd go and drink at lunch. Period. Oh, bitch. yeah. They can't. Okay, yeah. I feel, I, free country. It's my I know. civil right to go drink. Everyone at- did it. I'm yeah. just Italian, so you could smell it. Right. Exactly. Right. 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 Yeah. Oh, so what's the four one one today? What's been happening since I last spoke to you? Um, another episode of Dragula, of course. I mean, honestly, Ugh. it really hasn't been all that much. I'm uh, currently settled back into Seoul, trying to get Love my it. place together a little bit. Because, uh, fun fact, since I got on Dragula, I really haven't been home, like home here, for more than like three months at a time because I've been traveling so much. Right. So my house still looks like a workshop, so I do want to fix that. I kind of want it to look a little more homely than it is now so i do want to get to that soon uh but i've really been doing nothing but sleeping eating and jerking off that's all i've been doing i love that i do you gotta recharge that's what i'm learning that's why i'm out here i'm at matt's house and we're it's up yeah we're not telling people where i live (laughs) it's up upstate new york it's like five hours away but i said i gotta get out to the woods so today we went outside we built a chicken coop because he just bought some chickens i got some yeah i got some beautiful chickens some rhode island rock chickens they're hybrids super uh weather friendly for up here so i love that had to connect with nature you know they're so cute too i love their little clucks cluck cluck (laughs) Okay. <laughs> Speaking of, remember Baba Yaga? Oh, I love Baba Yaga. Oh, miss her. No, right? she love lived her. In, yeah, she lived in a house with chicken feet. She did, yeah. Yes. Oh my god. Um her Dolly loves um 
the Hellboy interpretation of Baba Yaga. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, from we the from talking about... one. I think the newer yeah. one. Yeah, I think it's like the yeah, third Dolly one. is obsessed with her. I just found out that Matt and Dolly have a little bit of a history. Oh, really? I met him after one of his concerts. He invited me and we like made out. Period. You better work. Yeah, that was a long time ago. This is when he was in that band. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, I didn't yeah. know it was a bad ending. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well. Don't mind me, like, I'm, I am I normally have gloves with this outfit, but, like, whatever. So, cause I, since I I did drive up five hours, I just, like, threw shit in the bag, and I was like, yeah, this could be a ghost. And then I, I like, I didn't have a plan when I did Matt's makeup. I just kind of did blue, and then we just threw on whatever. So this is, I don't have, if you're watching at home, I don't have hands, but that's, it's okay. Yeah, Again, we, just, okay. we don't get paid to do this. We're doing it on no, our own volition. We're so doing it for You are getting fun. what you are getting. Having some pizza, Matt made a um a little cocktail with what in it? Oh, a little rum, uh -huh. a little cider. Um, oh, some, that sounds delightful. Turmeric, orange juice. Yeah, it's good. Carrot. Sweet. Uh, yeah, carrot. All the stuff. Yeah. I have. Um, what are you smoking? That looks so delightful. Your little oh. instrument. We'll call it ectoplasm, but this is um this is. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let me Alphar, do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What what flavor is that? It's Mint? um guava ice. Oh, oh I love oh. that. Yeah, nice. no, she's yeah. she's something. I honestly, so I got so so I haven't, I didn't have a habit of smoking nicotine pre Dragula. Dragula got me hooked on nicotine. Yeah, for sure. And oh, um, no. like, <laughs> yeah, because like before that I had just come out of fucking cancer, and I was like, I I can't smoke. That's just not something I should. Uh, well still but um while i was getting prepped for dragula because everything is illegal here except for uh, nicotine which is so fucked up like nicotine is like so bad for you um like you would i would rather smoke weed before nicotine but it's not you know illegal hey. here so i had just crippling addiction to nicotine um oh. and during filming too and this goes for drag race too i think the yeah. only only time you get to step out of that box of a set to take a chill moment outside is when you're taking a smoke break. So I would right. join the girlies outside for a smoke break. And that's, you know, that was starts. the only way out. That was yeah. the only way out. I, um, I've never, um, I've never tried it, but of course I wrote the jingle cigarettes are bad for you. Which of course I do stand by. We gotta just I just gotta say it. It's not good for Was that a now. PSA jingle? Yeah, kind of. It was on um Slag Wars season one. Because mm -hmm. oh, Nikki Monet is. was chain smoking cigarettes and I, I didn't not just her, a lot of people were. They're all smoking. Everyone, all, the whole daddy team. I'm always they're always like, Oh, suck it up. Cause I'm always like, Oh, this gives me a headache. And they're like, Oh, come on. Everyone's, you know, rip, <laughs> ripping cigs. My my favorite PSA jingle is um Ooh, meth. Ooh meth. Ooh, meth. Look at me. Look. Busy, Busy as a bee. As a bee. Oh, yeah. It's the best one. It's the best Love PSA. Meth. Not good. We've been talking about meth a lot no, recently. Really yeah. Not good. yeah, no, oh, not good. It's not good. Have you heard about super meth? Super meth? Now it's I'm super... interested. Now, now you've got <laughs> slap super on it, and I'm suddenly <laughs> interested. Oh, yeah. It just makes people super disoriented right away. Like, they've been up for four days, but it's, like, happens as soon as they smoke it instead of, like, four days huh. later. So Not it's, good. like, meth without all the perks of it. Yeah, yeah. What are the perks? Why would you smoke that? I don't know. People just hate living, I guess. Wow. <laughs> hate living. Welcome to 2024. We're almost Love there. that. Lovely almost way to there, open Matt. up the podcast. I think people yeah. are... Yeah, yeah, the yeah. math, the math cigarettes. <laughs> now, right. the reason I wanted to bring Matthew on the podcast is because we became friends what three years ago now. That's right. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But what's what? What the reason why I said, "Oh my God, this guy is amazing," is because he is a, he is a seamstress. He can make outfits. He does makeup. He does art. He does like he can do literally everything. He's an artistic force, and That's we found so that cool. we had a 
Right. We have a lot of the same interests. And you obviously are a big fan of the horror, the spooky. Horror. The horror. You lived in a Halloween house that was burned down by Christians yeah. or co- allegedly. I don't, I don't know. even know who. We Love don't know. Not. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So he's he know. is a big fan of the spook and, of course, loves the Dracula. And so I said, I mm. got to get my girl on the pod. Yeah. Period. All for so it. I'm, Love it. I'm here. Honey, I'm here. Now, you watched the first and second and third episode of Dragula. What do you think of the season so far? I really like it. There's some surprising um, people that they casted on there for sure. Um, Fantasia really being one of them. You know, I know Fantasia from working with her on Hot House. Of course, um, of course. And other projects. So seeing her on there was like a little bit of a like whoa what the fuck i didn't expect you to um your career to take this sort of turn you're yeah. spooky yeah because she's spooky now uh-huh oh, exactly yeah. but been loving seeing her in this lens so far mm. like and regardless of you know dracula is alternative and all that but at the end of the day it is a reality tv show and uh, fantasia just fits right it just melts right into that scenery where whatever the show true. is about so i think it's true yeah, 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 honey, let's dive in this week. Ghosts of the Gatehouse. They said we're gonna b- give you a haunted hotel, and um, the ghouls are chit chatting around um mm-hmm. at the lab. They're calling it the lab, the lab. for the season again. The lab, and the ghouls are chit chatting around. Um, you know talking about who might have went home and uh, i don't know i think it divides a little bit but i think the general consensus is that um cynthia is here to stay you think that she is here to stay yes i think people are like well cynthia is well also if you if you're around cynthia at all like and i've i've got to hang out with her a little bit when i was touring with her and she is such a natural personality and like whatever conversation is going on, she can insert herself and kind of make her the start of star of the conversation. Like that's kind of comes natural to her. So I think, like, there is no way the Boulets were gonna get rid of her. I think. I think she's very entertaining, and so I'd be surprised if she made an exit quickly in the competition. Sorry, I had to plug my computer, and it was a whole thing. Oh my god. Um. Yeah, I'm loving Cynthia Doll, and then she came back in with this monologue, and I was like, honey. Oh, period. God. <laughs> She came and she said, I'm going to give you this monologue that I rehearsed. I said, freaking love it, sweetie. Freaking oh, love it. Come she said, in. she came right in. And before anyone could ask, Cynthia, hi, what? No, n- nobody got to ask that. She said, and she just went on. Mm-hmm. She really did. And you know what? And I love it. That's a girl. That's a girl who, you know, woman of her own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's, she's serving it. I'm starting to see the cast be like, oh, I'm on a reality show. Like, let's have fun. Like, We'll get to it, but even Jarvis, Isn't that like, crazy? <laughs> but Jarvis is being like, I am going to cast the spell. I'm like, love it. So, you know, like, that was so silly. Oh my God. No, yeah. I think that, I think by episode three or four, the cast slowly starts to realize, oh shit, I have to do certain things to a certain cameras. And, you know, I have to really listen to what the studio producer is saying to get my right. screen time in. Gotta get and, screen time, yeah. Yes, and I think Cynthia, Cynthia didn't need that to begin with, though. Cynthia came in exactly knowing what she was gonna do, and she did that with this monologue. I think, I mean, she she got her fucking screen time in. She gets her fucking screen time in, like no matter what. So good for her. She knows what she's I'm doing. I'm thankful for it. Exactly. Um, we have a little throwback moment now to season, I believe it's three, because we're about to get a key. We're going to find a little key that you just get a hotel key, and that person gets to either choose to save themselves. We also had a key. My season also had a key. So oh far, my God. every season had, had a key. Yes. Okay, so another. they're obsessed with keys. Who freaking knew? But I love that it makes more sense for this one because it's like a hotel key. I thought that hotel. was so fun. Mm-hmm. you know like grab your grab your key now yes. matthew what's your favorite hotel that you've ever stayed at oh geez um there is this one in mexico that was really beautiful it had like um pieces of like mayan pyramids like in the hotel rooms i love it yeah you think there love were ghosts that. there um no it was like a new building they just like <laughs> ripped off you know 
Sure. But Mexico is like a real, yeah, that place is definitely haunted for sure. Let's get the haunt to Mexico. I yeah. love a raggedy hotel. I'm sorry. Me I mean, I love a nice hotel, but I, I, there's something about me being like a traveling drag queen, mm. staying at like the cheapest hotel they could find outskirts and you know it happened to me a couple of times at where i walked walked in and it's like you know wow like this is what my career is right now <laughs> which like that that like humbling feeling love it needles on the it's, ground yeah visible we, ticks we, it, yes visible no, ticks not visible ticks. not bugs for real no, there were no ticks, oh. but no, 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 no. But it, it looked like there could be. I yeah. checked for ticks. There, there were no ticks, but I, yeah, it, 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 it was like just completely, you know, humbling. Yeah, Love I've been there too. I, I go, honey, I'm not doing that again. But I do like a haunted hotel. I've stayed when I was a kid. My parents brought me to that hotel in um, New Hampshire that I believe it's maybe something about The Shining. I don't know if they filmed parts of The Shining there or what, but. It's a haunted hotel. I stayed there as a kid, didn't experience anything. I've stayed in a lot of haunted places, but I've never experienced anything. But that is my curse as um as someone who doesn't experience when I was a kid, I lived in a haunted house. Did you? Oh, yeah. really? There used to be Wait, like this like haunted? very haunted. I was very young, probably like three or four, but there would be this shadowy figure that would um like always chase us around the house. And the, Wait, the house, the entire like floor plan was like a donut like it would it was like a circle so you could like walk through every room and there's like a bathroom in the middle and so i i remember it always be like who's in the house and i'd like run through like looking and there'd always be like this figure that it would just be like leaving the room but i'm not the only one that saw it like the people that lived us lived there before us said the same thing also the basement half of it was bricked off like this damn I know, it's like creepy. what is it hiding? You know? Exactly. Did I ever tell you I moved out of a house as a child because it was haunted? Really? Yeah, when I was in elementary school, my mother saw a ghost and we left. But it was a really freaky house. I never I don't remember experiencing anything, but now thinking back, I'm like, that was a weird ass house. Like there was some weird stuff going on. The basement, there was a room that had no windows or doors, and the only way I could get into it was because somebody smashed another wall so there was like a wall that had been busting in but then behind the wall was another room and this is going to sound weird but it's true it was filled from floor to ceiling with old books and magazines oh. really weird and I, would just go, I would just go play around i would just go play around in there love that. anything what good kind of yeah i know i remember anything finding good? like a map i found like a mad tv magazine oh, comic or something yeah, that was fun. But that's all I really remember. And then my mom saw a ghost yeah. and we hightailed it out of there, I guess. I was young. Damn. So there was like someone died there and they just like closed over the... I guess so. Closed every door to me. Wow. Yeah, I know. Anyways, they each had to choose a hotel key. Oh, and which was presented by Miss Coco Kane from oh. uh, our own, our, our very own Miss Coco Kane, Miss Extra oh. Sister. Looking um, amazing. She looks... She looks so incredible good. bitch what the fuck this like, is our first exorcister correct yes first and she comes sister. in with her ghostly she's like very soft-spoken like ghostly this episode like a very in character like mirror mirror on the wall like who's the luckiest of them all or something like that and she's very like you know ghostly i love she looks great she successfully came on that show and like had a morticia adams attitude for me like the whole time and, and a I think look. It's, yeah she and it's Adam real Adam's look, yeah oh that one was so fucking good like the, the long braids sent me over the freaking edge oh and she had like the rose and then like poor yes. i forget yeah it was but the attitude was always very you know elusive and is that the right word yes. very elusive chanteuse very oh no, no. and Chant it worked for her in a cool way yeah i loved it and i love coco oh my god Yes. And um, you know, I on their podcast they always were like, Oh, we, we would sometimes say that Coco reminded us of Fantasia. So I thought this was a really cool moment, especially when they showed Fantasia being like, I love Coco. I was I like, Coco. Oh, this I is, know that was so cute. It was a fun little moment of these two big Tatita ladies meeting. Yes. 
right? Matt, we recently did a project and Matt um, shared a bed with Fantasia. How was it sharing a bed with the Tatitas? Oh, it's fine. Okay, love it. Yeah. What do you mean it's fine? <laughs> it's fine. Like, I didn't die, obviously. You didn't have a fantastic Someone's time? Yeah, no, you wake up and they're like... <laughs> Fanny is so funny. No, we would lay... We would crack... She would, like, crack me up spilling tea uh, from, like, the stuff that we filmed the day before. And, like, we just had a good old time. She's the best. Yeah, I love bye. the girl. And who gets the special key? Mr. Jarvis Hammer gets the key. Of course. And the key is always, like, iffy. Because, like, I feel like the key... Um, Because you can either save yourself, put someone up for extermination, or save someone else. Um before it was it, it actually has one more um because before on my season at least it was either put someone up for extermination or save yourself but now you get right. to save someone else that might be up for extermination so you really get to control mm. all the odds which is mm. great may the odds and, be ever in your flavor uh-huh and i think jarvis it was good for jarvis that he had the key because also like this challenge even like listening to the prompt seems like jarvis's challenge that's like, what i was gonna to say the t like it, yeah. so if anyone else had the key i feel like even like the thought of jarvis like sabotaging jarvis would have come to mind to anyone who's you know in it for the game yeah so i think it's definitely good that jarvis got the key and we get presented with a challenge which is a ghostly hotel haunted hotel haunted hotel oh my god yeah um, which is a fun, um, it's very fun. You know, I think ghosts are sort of hard to do. Definitely. Ghosts, ghosts are tough. I, I think it's especially tough to make them, like, interesting. Um, of course, I think my favorite ghost that has ever been done on this show was, of course, Saints, uh, Ghost on Resurrection. Oh, she ghost look? Mm -hmm. Absolutely unbelievable. I have the t-shirt of that look. Um, holy hell. But, you Love know, that's that a look. classic ghost. Aside from that, you know, it, you've got to really be creative. So I said, okay, let's see what these girls are going to bring to the table. Let's see their interpretation of ghosts. And I think this was a really, uh, I think this, you know, it may have been up Jarvis's alley, but this is also a tough one because it's like, okay, this is literally you. So yeah. what are you going to do with this? So, so let's find yeah, out. because you can do something too obvious and be like well this is usually what you do so like what else like this it's a tough little thing and especially when um it's a challenge that fits your draft so to a t that people probably expect more from you um, right which even before the episode aired when the um episode like the title and what the challenge was going to be got revealed like people in the um people on twitter just being like oh my god jarvis is gonna win like jarvis right. is gonna do so good i can't wait to see jarvis's look which like i mean obviously from the get-go it's like a lot of pressure and right. yeah but i feel like with hotel there's so much you could do with it i mean it seems yeah. like a very you know but then hotel can have so many different types of people in it like you know um and there's like a what would you hotel, have done like a receptionist um I mean, receptionist is always like a fun little, but then I feel like I would have gone like with a hotel, maybe um like AHS, um, hyperdermic Sally kind of character, like hooker, mm. like a yeah, like a like a hooker that perpetually kind of exists in the hotel kind of vibe. I, I do I, I find that very glamorous. Mm. Um and Sarah Paulson in that season. It, my so favorite good. character she's ever done, Hyperdermic Sally. Really? Yes. I tried to watch it and I couldn't get through it. This really? Is the show. I oh love that God. season. People hate that season, but I love it. I love it too. I just can't watch American Horror Story. They lost me. They lost me. I'm sorry. Really? Oh my God! After I season three, like, I was I don't done. Know why? But I thought I thought you would love that show. I mean, it kind of sucks now, no. but like. I feel like unanimously, even up until season five, was pretty good. Mr. Flanagan took it over and has has taken the crown for me because uh, let me tell you why I don't like it anymore. It's written by a bunch of Twitter gays. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I mean yeah. Like, I mean, this one was like real horror, and season one and two were so good. 
And then it ha- had this switch where, like, I haven't watched the new season, but, like, Kim Kardashian is like, do you know how many dicks Kyle had to suck to get you on that red carpet? Get me my pina colada. Like, it's very just, like, I'm like, no one talks yeah. like this, bitch. And so I know that they're like, it's campy. And I'm like... All right, people in LA do talk like that. Oh, please. They're all disasters. <laughs> and and that's why I moved out of LA. That's why I got the hell out of LA. Right, all right. Hold on, I'm going to crack a window open. Oop. Hoso's hot. Um, now, Matthew, do you know what you would have done for this challenge had you had you? I might have been like a security guard, probably in like a bouncer. Yeah. He, well, I'm thinning. thinking like the guy that um m- like that mass murderer from the H H Holmes. H H Holmes, exactly, with the the gas going into the hotel. That probably would have been my angle. Whoa, work. Yeah. I don't know what I would have done. This one really stumped me. I think, you know, Fantasia sort of had a similar idea. And I was talking to Jan about this too. Um, Cause Jan was like, I would be the singer. And I was like, I guess I would be the singer, mm. but I'm like, I wouldn't want it to be nor like if anything, I would have wanted my death to have been like, I don't know. I would have wanted to be like fused with musical instruments, but then I'm like, is that ghosts? Ooh. I don't know. You know I mean, what I mean? Like, be. You're like, like possessing I- the instrument. You're like, I had like piano <laughs> keys in my face and like, you know, like, but then I'm like, they would have been like, what the hell is this? So I genuinely don't know. I was not murdered by a piano that fell on you. Oh, yeah, see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, piano tea. See? In That's your mouth. fun. See? Yeah, something like that. But also like, that doesn't really, for if I was like, this would be me in the hotel. Yes. But that also doesn't like quite excite me. So I'm trying to, I still don't know what I would do. You could have been someone that committed suicide and just have this absolutely beautiful dress on and then just this exploded half open head. Well, we saw a few of those in this, in this, on this floor. Oh, that's true. That's the true. cars Some are really people... loud outside. So I'm going to close it back again. I'm just going to self I don't hear any bit. cars. No, let us hear the cars. I want to hear the sights and sounds of Seoul. Because I've never been there, so I'm getting a little bit of an immersive experience. Ooh. And you know I love immersive experiences. Well, Speaking I don't know of, if that's what our viewers want. <laughs> rest in peace, sleep no more in New York City. They're closing in January. I'm devastated. The show is amazing. If you haven't seen it, um, go and see it. Have you seen Sleep No More? Uh, Yeah, it's, it's cool. Oh, I've seen it like nine times. And by that, I mean mm. like, like four or five. Really? Did you see it, Hoso? No. Oh, you. They give you like know. a mask. You have to go in. You would love it. It's um, it's Macbeth, but it takes place at a hotel in the forties, right? Like thirties, okay. forties. Um, and it's it feels like you're in a live action video game. So you all wear these masks, love and you that. can do whatever you want to do. And you watch there's, all these different characters do all this stuff. And there's all these scenes oh, happening simultaneously throughout so cool. the building. So you can oh, like walk fun. around or follow a character. Yeah. And they'll go through and do their their spiel. It's I would, fun. I would I always follow that. the male witch. And sometimes I was like, oh, there's one male witch. And I've gone a bunch of times being like, okay, I got to stop. Well, get this. You, you, I was like, I got to stop following the male witch. I got to do something else. And then ultimately, by the middle of it, I'll be like, where's the male witch? And so then I ended up following him. But there's this one scene where the witches and Macbeth have this like blood sacrifice orgy. And it's like all strobe lights and they're upstairs. And the male witch just comes in naked with a boar head on. And it's like, it's so good. And he's covered in blood. And then you go and watch him take a shower. And that's kind of fun, too. Voyeuristic. Oh, gosh. Very fun. That sounds fun. It is. It's kooky, spooky. And my friend August, August, if you're listening, shout out. I'm always like, August, you got to be the male witch, but TBD. But well, the show's closing, so it's not going to happen now. (laughs) Anyways, okay. We get into a few little um, side. Okay, okay. Here's my one. Here's my one. Because you know that I have loved all the upgrades they have made this season. Think that it is fabulous i'm having a fabulous the coffin time. table yeah matt wants the coffin to, like the coffin table he loves it in the that in they the- all meet and talk at yes oh yeah no they had they they introduced that my season and they were very clear about don't don't slam it don't touch it it's resin it will break or it will like you know scuff scuff up it was very expensive. Don't do that. And the bitch, every time the bitches would, like, it's drag queens. Let's just put dra- a bunch of drag queens on a table and let them talk. Like, they're going to slam it. They're going to right. scrape it with their heels. They're going to they're gonna do everything. They're going to fucking put their heels on it. Like, you know. So 
at one point, like, Drac had to, like, literally shout at us, like, stop touching the fucking table. It was, it was a whole thing. It was so funny. We were all like, okay, Jesus. Oh, my God. Well, I'll tell you, they do these side scenes, and maybe it is just me, but it feels very, feels very you said this too, though, feels very obvious that they're like, okay, you're going to go over here and have this uh-huh. conversation now. And because, because it's proscenium, like the cameras are all in front of them. It's yeah. not, I don't feel like immersed. So when they're like, Neo Huru is like, has her hands in her arms, something is up. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I don't know, honey. Can't you just be like, hey, New Hudu, like, what's your relationship? I know that's so drag race, but like, what's your relationship like with your mom? And she would have been like, oh boy, let's talk about it. But yeah. instead, it's like, oh, God. you know, it's just like, holy shit. Yeah. So, the, the story producing is definitely, it's like a dollhouse that's cut in half that we're like watching yeah. it from here. So it's very, very like, sorry. Yeah, and right, you know, right behind the camera, there's the story producer going this and this and this. So it's like, you know, it's very whatever it takes to move this get move the story going and you know whatever and uh it's not like dragula doesn't have a full 360 set yet right yet yeah we'll get there we'll get there we'll get there but uh we do uh, we make it with me wait me uh, we <laughs> make it what with what we got there we go. Now, what did you think of this these um conversations? So oh, well let's we'll get let's get into them. I think was the first conversation um did Throb take JK away? Yes. So um Throb takes JK to another room and talks yeah, about the talk. last cauldron, I guess. And yeah. well, Throb like comes out okay, here's the thing. Like, I really like Throb's drag. I just feel like Throb talks to people in this really weird, condescending way, at least on TV. It's an edited mm. TV show. Again, it's an edited TV show. I do not know Throb as a person. Like, and obviously, like, they got told to, like, hey, Throb, since you had this thing with Jay last um, cauldron, like, why don't you bring right. Jay over to the cauldron and let's talk about it? Yeah, I, I get it. Like, it, I'm, I'm sure Throb didn't initiate it or anything, but Throb, right off the gate, like, goes to JK and be like, oh, you were really volatile, you were very, you know, you burned a lot of bridges, let's talk about how mm. we can fix that. In, like, this way that, like, JK is just sitting there, like, I was just defending myself, like, what are you, you know, because, like, everyone was piling on in JK, obviously, JK was, like, you know, biting back and stuff, too, but, like, everyone was piling on JK, I would be a little frustrated in that moment, too. But then, it was immediately Throp going, maybe you shouldn't talk right now. You know you know what I mean? It's, it feels weird. So I, mm. I, I just don't like how Rob is t- talking to JK at the moment. But again, like, I don't know the full, like, context of it. It just feels really weird to me. Um, JK, even then, in the moment where it was very, like, okay, I guess. Like, it, it, it was very clear to me that JK just wanted this conversation to be over and was annoyed. So JK was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Like, it, it, to me, it seemed like that. Right. It kind of feels like uh, they were coming from a position of privilege in like a weird Definitely. way. Yeah. Uh, elaborate on that. Well, just like the the sort of um, comfortableness to extend their e- their ego out that way in sort of a conversation instead of like meeting it like sort of halfway and being like, how are you? Just like going at them and being like, this is what I saw. And I'm projecting this onto you now. Mm, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And it felt like, I mean, obviously, and like Throb won the challenge beforehand, was like very coming from, it it, it felt a little talking down, at least in my eyes. Sure. Um, But at the, um, whatever it ended up being, they hug it out and uh, they come back. And when we come back, we see Neo kind of on the side, you know, not really knowing what to do and hands. um yeah the hands and <laughs> uh, i mean I, I believe that neo was like genuinely frustrated at that moment and um Seisha sure. and fantasia kind of circle around them forms a little forms a little doll circle and you know what's the tea what is you know what is going on right and neo's like i just and this is like very very relatable for asian fo- folks all out there especially if you're there's a group like obviously um the asian american immigrant experience is that you have family back home that has no idea what you're doing 
Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Even me, mm. like a lot of my family in Korea right now, um, even though I live here, has no idea what I do for a living. They kind of just know that I do art, quote unquote, and like once now and again, tell me when am I going to get a real job? You know what I mean? It's it, it, it's it's sort of that. Actually, I was at a family gathering um, not too uh, long ago, and I had this like three, like really young nephew that I was like kind of babysitting while this was the, the family gathering was happening. And she was like, so uncle, because I'm an uncle to her. She's so uncle, what do you do? And me like talking to this toddler being like, I couldn't be like, Drag, I drag so, <laughs> yeah. so I, I, I'm a, yeah, I'm a spooky cross dress. I couldn't say that. So I was like, well, I'm an artist. Uncle's an artist. And she doesn't miss a beat and goes, oh, like, do you have like an actual job then? And I, I was like, listen to you, little shit. <laughs> right. We talked about this a little bit. I think you and I yes. um, over drinks or whatever, but like, I'm so ignorant to the like queer culture in um places like Seoul. Like I don't under like I'm I'm so intrigued by like how that fits in because it's very different from America, right? Well definitely. And Asian I mean so Asian queer people who work in nightlife, most of them, I think most all of them that I know have a very similar situation uh with me and Niho Neo where mm. we do our thing we're like say, we're tatted up we're like living the full lifestyle wherever we're working but back home there's a large majority of our families that have no fucking clue what we're doing doesn't know that we're queer doesn't know that we have tattoos doesn't doesn't know have this and just kind of lives in this oblivious state that we have to mask ourselves when we go back for family gathering or whatever and we kind of have to pretend like i have a neck tattoo that i cover with tv paint stick when i go no. visit them because they will you flip do? the fuck out and fucking yeah they will flip the fuck out and disown me if they see it so i have to cover this i have to cover this i like use like color correcting and everything to like cover it because wow. um, whatever and i do like this family gathering maybe once or twice a year and i have to be like full-on corporate boy mode when i go so like not corporate boy mode i've like kind of transitioned into like having my hair down and like you know like wearing more like of what i usually wear and they're kind of looking at me like this is getting a little weird but they don't say anything because it's very like don't ask don't tell kind of thing until it becomes too um you know obvious so i will kind of you know to sit there for a minute just like pretend like you know i'm not a uh, a drag queen <laughs> but uh neo talks about that struggle and just like i just am worried if this comes out and they might see this and like i don't know what they're gonna think very very relatable struggle for an asian american or an asian immigrant um person doing doing drag and the fantasia kind of shares her story a little bit about you know oh i had to like step away from them a little bit and give them some time which is very odd like very valid um and right. they have this little moment with the dolls which i thought was very cute the it's dolls. very important to yeah, yeah 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 i loved this moment this was a this was special for me especially from dragula like i feel like we, it's uh it's seldom we get moments like this on dragula where it's like let's have a real conversation about i mean we've had things like this when um i think L louisiana purchase like opened up about coming out and um you know all of that but it's I, I love when we're able to have these moments of like well let's talk about genuine you know, yeah yeah oh you're yawning I, sorry I said matt's gonna have a nice on, something me, to say water. my yeah. grandparents didn't know for the long they I mean they i mean they're not alive anymore but when they were they didn't know what i did they didn't know i was gay they didn't know you were sucking weenie they didn't know i was <laughs> sucking dick and fucking buttholes just to get a little quaint you know i mean it's such an interesting thing you know like as i've had situations where people have been like you can't wear that right now or you can't do this and like you know for for me it's like that hey that's part of who i am like you know it's not like you're saying like that aesthetically looks bad it's like don't wear that right now because of the world so it's a little right. like well that's and it's like a hard thing to get over it also makes you want to do it more you know what i mean oh, oh totally like, my, very, my rebel very, complex like, 
Well, <laughs> well, it's like, well, you the- say I can't. That's like I have this like sweatshirt that's a sweater that says six 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 all over it, and this woman once came up to me and I was in a business meeting wearing this because I don't give a fuck, and she came up and she goes, "Excuse me, what's your what does your shirt mean?" And I was like, "Oh, you know what it means, girl." And I just said, "Well, the devil, of course." And she said, "Oh, and you stand by that?" And I said, "A hundred percent." And she was like mortified. And the guy that was I was with was like, does that happen often here? He was from London. I was like, yeah, all the time. And then I was like, I kind of want it to happen again. Because then I was thinking about it. And I was like, oh, I wish I had I had like so much better stuff to say. But it took me off guard. You know what I mean? Because I just want to be like. The devil, of course, is cunty. And I, I like it. Yeah, I, I, I the like devil, it. of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope you said it just like that. Well, the devil, of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Hello, the devil. Mr. Satan, honey. Was there any other scenes in the lab this season? And by that, I mean I think, this episode? I think it ended at the sweet moment right there. We and had a little sister moment, yes. And they do, okay. What? Love the boys, love love the girls, beautiful gowns, gorgeous gowns. Um, <laughs> they need to quit it with this siren. They need to quit it with this. The floor Thank show you so much. Star. We're Thank over you. it. Everyone's over it. Every single person involved is over it. Please, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> it's for since season one they've done this attention competitors, attention competitors. No, no, no. The it was floor from sh- my season. It started oh, that's when it started. Season. Okay, it, was, it started. It on doesn't my make season. it doesn't make sense because sense. they say, "All right, you have to be done now and go get ready," but they're not ready, so, and then yeah, they and- show up and they're all ready. And Orcotic has like a piece of plastic stuff to his chin. Right. And I was like, oh my God. What? Like, no one. Okay. I just. Feel We're like, not falling for it anymore. We're not falling for well, it. Well, the sky's not it, falling. Like, when they did it, like the first episode of my season, it was like, haha this is cute you know like oh my god we have to pretend like we're panicking they did it again and we were like okay this is you know we get it and we did it the whole season and we were like this is so stupid by the end of it and then they did it for titans and then they do it for this season i feel like what they're trying to get at now is that like the contestants and everyone involved is so over it that they have this personal vendetta to keep it going until it's (laughs) camp like it's gonna be like it's going to be like season eight and they're going to be doing it every episode. And it's going to be like a joke within itself at that point. I think that's what they're trying to go for. But right, maybe, there maybe they're so smarter than we are. are. They're like, <laughs> it will right. be no, funny. I, I think, just wait. It's going to, it's going to be funny. You know, I was like, Hey, it's a sleeper hit. Like just wait, you know, but I don't think, I don't think we were there yet. I haven't heard um, one person be like, you know what moment I live for that. I haven't heard one <laughs> yet. Not a single person. <laughs> not no. a single person. So don't know. Let's are we about to dive into the floor show? Are we are we there at the freaking floor show? Let's do it. Okay, well, let's talk about it. Um, these boule Let looks. Me pull it up. Okay, let's talk about the boule looks. I'm gonna bring this up for you, Matt, because for yeah, you. Yeah, I can't, I don't remember. Okay, good. We we watched this last night, but I'm gonna show you the looks, honey. Oh, right, right. Um, what are your thoughts? I think they're referencing okay. yes. uranium glass. <laughs> Really? Yeah, because uranium glass glows like that, that color, that, and it's something that they probably would be into, which is glass. This sort of collectible glassware from the Victorian era. Sure. That is this weird sort of trans, translucent green color. I have no idea what's. Them. I have no idea what is on their head. I'm just gonna be so real with you. Yeah, the pillbox oh. hats are a little confusing as far as like the shape. I was really trying to. I said, "Is it a hotel? What am I? What am I missing?" That's wait, what the problem wait, wait. was. What? Someone said the thing on their heads looked like the urinal soap. Do you know what I'm talking <laughs> oh, about? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yes. Oh like, my god. And I was like, "That is so dead on. That is a urinal soap. <laughs> a urinal cake. Yeah. That, but is know, it giving like, urinal? Just on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it bubbles a little bit. It's literally that. But um, I think clear to me. Different from them. Very different yeah. for them. I love that. Yeah. I kind of like, like the color like, a lot, mm-hmm. and yes. the makeup with it is really nice. I like that they chose a sort of lip that was different for them, and yeah, they've been doing yeah. this glittery lip recently. I love it. And it's just like, oh my god! There was a moment where it showed that like these worked in black light, or they were something glow in the dark, and I was like, ooh, that's really exciting to me. Yes. Mm. Um, and I kind of like that. 
the whole thing is kind of moldy looking. It's totally. like, is it a little edge? It, I mean, is it like a hotel bathroom? I don't know. Honestly, what is the shoulder? What is the shoulders? <laughs> I have no idea. What are, oh those, what are those shoulders? You know what? It is quite confusing, but I like that they went like <laughs> this crazy confusing <laughs> route because they're usually their looks are very clean cut, easy to understand. Yeah. Which I think this this abstract, one is yeah, it's like moldy this, too. They have like mold this, marks on their face, right? They're like this abstract UV lit moldy urinal soap moment is giving for me. Same, yeah. I don't. Hate I love it. it. I don't hate it. And joining our our judges um on the panel tonight is Tanana Reeve Du, who I freaking love. She's a horror historian. She's mm-hmm. an icon. She's been she's been on the show before, and of course we are then joined again by the season three winner Landon Sider. Landon Sider, awesome judge. Like actually gives critiques. <laughs> like yeah, love yeah, love. It's love. True. love I, you judge. saw Landon was like, should I start an OnlyFans for my legs? Because I guess. The full shot, like Landon had their like yeah. his legs out. I was like, "Do I start OnlyFans for the legs?" You guys are living living for my legs. I said, "Honey, make that money. Give it up. Give it up." Now, as someone who knows something about OnlyFans, yeah, what do you think? Should Landon start an OnlyFans? Listen, you can always try. Worst case scenario, you you still make money. You know what I mean? So true. true. Yeah. Even if it's 50 bucks, it's 50 bucks. Where can yeah. we follow you on OnlyFans? Oh, well, I mean, I don't know if this is the avenue to be selling <laughs> hot mask man on man sex. But yeah, it's you all know. Drag. It's all drag. We've talked about this before. <laughs> am I wrong or am I right or am I right? No, it's true. Honestly, listen, if when I need to, in the right lighting, I will paint on a little extra ab to help me out, you know? Sure. Exactly. Drag. Yeah. It's drag. Um, it's theater. It's theater. OnlyFans backslash yes. MatthewCamp.com. If you guys want to check it out, anyone. Great time. OnlyFans, Matthew Camp. MatthewCamp.com. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? No. Yes, you do. What's the guy's name? The Trump guy who made a video for you, a cameo. Oh, oh my God. Right, right. Um, What's that? The the fixer guy. I forget his I name. Know. I had Trump's old attorney do a. Um, cameo a cameo for me where he endorsed in my only fans <laughs> that is he clear, hilarious he clearly didn't know what it was and it's like and he's like I'm, really loving the only fans matt it's like having a good time with matthew on the only fans once again matthew camp only fans it's amazing go check it out like had no idea what it's that good. was it's, it's really good. good that is really funny right oh my god well i don't upload on mine anymore since i <laughs> haven't had time since i started like traveling with dragula and stuff sure but um i used to it used to be theater i used to have this green screen that i um it might be here still no i used to have this green screen backdrop that i used to like put visuals on the back with and i used to like dress up as like fairies and stuff and jerk off it was, it was great it was grand old time it's still oh, yeah, there. That. i'm sure there, people but... loved it that's amazing i love it i love that a little fay moment. Yeah. Honey, we have Mr. Zombie, Throb Zombie. Mr. Throb Zombie looking sharp as fuck in this ghostly fur jacket. Um, I want this outfit. I want it. I want to wear it. I think it is so cool. I mean, we mentioned H.H. Awesome. H. H. Holmes before. Yeah. It's, but it's giving it's glim- giving glamour H.H. H. Holmes. Um, also, with those circle glasses, I'm giving getting a little bit of Coraline, which we know is my favorite movie of all mm-hmm. time. And obviously, it's not buttonized, but there's a little bit of like, I don't know. Cartooniness. It's a little cartoony, and I just love how it's bedazzled, and the hair is bedazzled. And I think he has a face prosthetic on, but the makeup is like so fucking gorgeous. I think um, that's all, I think that's all contouring. I don't bro, think he has it's a amazing. On. It's, it's amazing. amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. He looks so glamorous and gorgeous, and um, yeah, I'm obsessed with it. I think the details are beautiful. I want that suit. I wonder where he got yeah. it. The hair looks great, too. Right? The hair does look great. Is that a wig? That's a wig. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a great a wig. wave, I think. What I love, oh, I also love the um, the skull top of the um, of the tie. is mm-hmm. amazing. And then we saw in the work, and we didn't really see it on the floor show, but built into the jacket are 11 souls that 
these claims. So there's just like glowing faces on the jacket. Oh, that's cool. Right? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I love it. I think it's a really cool character. I love the color scheme. This like mint almost, it's like light blue mint color. I, I love it. I was very aesthetically pleased. We also have to talk about, so, okay, this also is a performance challenge. This is a lip sync moment. Uh-huh, okay, and yeah. they're lip syncing to this. This song choice is very um, different, and I like it. It's very, like, doo-wop. Not, not doo-wop, what do you <sighs> call it? Like, it's very, like, 1950s radio. It's very, like, very, yeah. it's very no Betty business. Boopy. It was very that. Yeah, totally. It's spooky. Um, you know... Could I have done with not a floor show version of this, but like maybe a spooky music video of them like as singers at a club? Maybe that would have been cooler for me. I feel like a lot of contestants <laughs> didn't, even with the extended cut, they didn't mm-hmm. really, a, a lot of contestants didn't really get a lot of screen time at all. That's true. That's I don't true. know if that that's was true. intentional. Like Throb got a good chunk of it. So we got to see Throb like, you know, lip sync it out and stuff. And Throb was great. It looked like Throb right. did a well job. And had this moment of like when this uh, music gets slower, he was looking at his um palm with the blood on it, and he was like mm. reminiscing back on the killings that he. It was very like, you know, I loved it. But a lot of the contestants, especially, I mean, we're going to talk about it, but Neil got zero screen time. Well, we I was like, any of Neil. we barely got to see any of Cynthia, like, at all. Yeah. I said, are they throwing Neo a little bit of a bone? Because we know Neo said that she isn't much of a performer. So I said, oh, are we skating around Miss Neo here? Maybe it was because of all the prosthetic vaginas. They just were wanted to flash. That was the last episode, sweetie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you're hard. Okay. I know you're stuck up on that. I am too. I love. I love the vagines, but love it. But I will say, on the judging panel. Uh, the Boulets talked about how good Neil performed, like the performance part. Right. Was yeah. like, Wait, you p- performed actually great, but we don't get to see any of it. So what's the mm. tea? You know what I mean? So what is it's, the tea? it's just like it, it. It just feels like you know the editing's a little off. But sure, um, it could have again. been something simple like the sound guy lost the SD card or something. <laughs> or maybe something like that. Yeah. Oh my god, that happened oh to me. God. That's why I know. Did it really? Yeah. Oh, oh my god, you're right. On Slag Wars 1, oh right? <laughs> Wait, Slag Wars 1. Please. So what? during a Titans tour, we uh-huh. did one day it was a meet and greet, and our usual photographer wasn't available because he was sick or something. So this new photographer that was hired by the venue or something came in and did the meet and greet. And she was really quick about it. She was like, okay, we're going to do this. And we did like a whole line of meet and greet. It was a long meet and greet. So we were like going through it. And maybe like five people were left, right? And this photographer looks at the camera and the face drops. She's pale and she's like, oh shit, there's clearly something wrong. And Ian goes up to her and is like, what is wrong? And then Ian's face drops. So she like accidentally deleted the entire meet and greet like okay. pictures, every single one. Now mm-hmm. we have to do it all over again. The way they were like shivering and like scared for their life when they were trying to tell Drax and Swan, especially Drax. Drax boy, like Drax was like, we're gonna do it again. And we're gonna make it quick. <laughs> and we did it again. And it was the most Here uncomfortable. It was so scary. You better have uh, your SD card in there because I'm not doing this again. Let me make myself clear. That. We're doing it one more time, right? <laughs> oh, what a what a time. I saw you on that tour. It was freaking fabulous. I saw you in New York, remember? We went to Hard Rock Cafe afterwards. Thank you, thank you. Yes, uh-huh. we did go to Hard Rock Cafe afterwards. I said, let's be tourists for a minute and go to the Hard Rock Cafe in Times Square. And you know what? Was we it had, good? We had a blast. We did. We did have a blast. I had a good time. Um, with Reed. Yes. Uh, love him. Okay, let's jump on to BlackBerry. Now, BlackBerry went to the sort of, uh, what is this girl called? It's like the cigarette the girl? The cigarette girl. The fag girl. The fag, the faggot, if you will. 
the, the, the faggot. The, the Wait, fag did you hag. see that meme? The Megan Trainer. It was like it was like Megan Trainer's oh, yeah. coming I'm out with the song. Faggot. I'm a I female faggot. No, I, I wish that she had said that in real life. What a sick <laughs> music band change for her. <laughs> her being like, you Love know, that. I'm a female faggot. I have a bussy too. And That's what, what the whole thing was. What? <laughs> I love it. And like the picture is like her uh, red carpet picture in the most basic dress going. Uh-huh. And it's so funny to me. I'm a oh female faggot. It's so I'm good. I'm a female faggot. Absolutely. Shout um, out to Haley Shapiro. Female... That's a female faggot. Yes. Um, uh -huh. Oh my God. Yeah, no. Um, we have yes. a fag yeah. hag, the, the cigarette girl. And this look What'd is you think? awesome. I love it. My favorite Blackberry look to date on this season. I will agree with that. Yeah, I like that. And it's a classic, right? Like when you're thinking of a hotel, like a haunted hotel, like a vintage hotel moment, you think right. of like a sick, like a sexy cigarette girl, and that's great. Like you can do like and cigarettes are a little faggot. dirty, so you can make it spooky a little bit. And her makeup right. kind of reflects like the ashes and stuff. The blaze didn't like it, but I really like the makeup. Um, mm. And she looked like she was slaying the lip sync too. Like she was like totally all the beats. She 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 delivered, and we know that Blackberry can deliver a performance. So loved it. Love I it. think that this look, this costume, really fits her uh, brand of drag yeah. too. You know, totally. Yeah. Should we move on to anaphylactic? Now this yes. is giving ghostly glamour, and I know that there was. It's also giving period. Period. Okay, say that. Um, <laughs> I get it. I, I get it. Honey. Um, but of course, down the back, there was the gag when she shot herself in the head, and then there was a whole blowout in the back of her wig and went right. all the way down her back. I thought it was concept conceptual. I thought it was pretty. Um, I, I had just, a good time. I just what? have a bit of an issue with the shoe. She got it. Oh, I can't. Mm, let, me, let me look at the shoe the because shoe. you know I, I'm top, top. My, is she this in a slipper? slipper? This this bunny slipper almost. It's um well like what what are we trying to do here? You know what I mean? The other thing is are those flats? Oh, I, it almost looked like flats. I, I do not know if there was a little heel on it. I do not know if it's a heeled slipper. It, it looks like she's trying having... to give like you know, like a boudoir, like you know, like a, like you know, just it woke looks up, like, like she's like... having difficulty walking too. And for that <laughs> shoe, and for that shoe, it shouldn't be that difficult. It's just sure. like very. It just cuts her down, even with this giant wig that she has on. Um, Something's everything up. else, love it. I love this, like you know, subdued, like ghastly yeah. glamour type of look. I I do love it, yeah. but. The shoes, I just saw the shoes and I was like, are, are those slippers? And why are those slippers? If you clocked are, are right slippers? in on the shoe and yeah. you said, what's going on? What What is going on? And granted, <laughs> I'm not known for the best shoe. Like, I, I really am not. Like, if you look at my shoes in the season, both of my seasons, horrible, rancid. Um, okay. Katya read me for those rancid go-go boots, and I fully stand by that. But doesn't mean that I can't right. talk shit about someone else's shoes, which these, so I'm like, yeah, I don't even yeah, wear yeah. shoes, so I'm not wearing shoes Damn. right now. Period. Um, yeah, I thought it was very Anna. I thought I thought it was. I can see the ghost element of it, which is not easy to do. Um, yeah. And there was a story for me there. I think Landon was like, "I wish you brought it to the front of the," which I'm like, "Okay, I totally get it." Um, but I thought it was. I thought it was successful. I did. I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah, and she her lip sync also like they showed her a lot of like mug up close lip syncing moments and she looked like she was delivering like theater. i buy that from anna i buy that from anna yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and anna's like a very the theatrical queen that's like what she's known for back in the uk and i feel like that's what she gave here this is very period. Up alley. period and next um, we have mr jk, JK. Mix JK and this is amazing. I love I love the wig. Um, it's like plastic, you know, mm. like that rubber plastic wig. I I love this character. It reminds me of something I like would see on face off. I think the makeup yeah. is beautiful. I love the colors of the makeup, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Um, I also love that they can open the bar on their chest the and there's a cabinet. It screams hotel to me. It screams ghost to me. The texture on there's really oh the fabric's really beautiful done well yes oh my god this fabric reminds me of like something that would be in a hotel like you know on the walls or like as a carpet or like a you know curtain it's great and the blood work on it is great um the little bell that he can ding is awesome <laughs> i love like, it and then there's a brain underneath they really fucking popped off with this i think um also i tweeted about this too i feel like this character and my um demon businessman character from my season would be like mm. co-workers oh god they, yeah yeah but they can't stand each other so like they talk shit about each other like to other totally co-workers. totally yeah, yeah, i buy yeah, that 100 yeah. percent. definitely um, love this character me too I, I think it was very successful i love it this is my favorite look we've seen of jk's and i'm glad that we are getting to see it and the performance looked tight every yes. beat mm-hmm. serving character serving story like utilized everything that he had on his body um i actually don't know if they go i'm just gonna stick today every, use day they, they everything they had on their body like it was great awesome love it i love it let's look at cynthia doll who is sort of the bellman it's like the bell person the bell yeah. right it's like the person that carries the bags i forget what they call that it's like madonna from the waist down bell boy from the waist up I love that is a yes. very true. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. The fit of this is very fashion. Like Cynthia's been serving a lot of like fashion? really cool fashion. Like it, but, but is it fashion? Um, is it no, fashion? Um, Cynth- Cynthia's been serving a lot of like really fashion leaning looks, which I love. Yeah. I just yeah. don't understand the bedazzle corset. I just do not I Right. I, I just do not understand it. Um for this look why it's there why it's silver bedazzled moment when nothing else on her body is i feel like a black corset granted i do not enjoy exposed corsets that much i it's just for my personal taste part of me just all me it can feel Um, dated sometimes yeah yes a, yeah. a, a, an exposed corset especially i hate i hate when girls have um exposed corset and that's like the cheap, and a tutu poly, the poly um something well, what's the material called it's like the cheap plastic leaning shiny material there's vinyl amazon corsets that are made with that uh material that i hate when it, whenever i see it like exposed this is not that this is like bedazzled it looks expensive i just don't know if it fits with the look Sure. I think it was I think it was a fun idea and a fun character and that you know it obviously does scream hotel. I got the story right away. Uh the proportions of the garment are really lovely. And when you look at the sleeve proportions with the hat and where the jacket hits and the pants, you can all tell that that was made specifically for them. Custom. Yes. Custom, yeah. This is a custom money. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, very, yes. very fun. Um, so I'm trying to look at this. All right, let's move on to Miss Boop Boopy Doop herself, Fantasia <laughs> Royale Gaga. Okay. She's giving she is, Betty Boop. Honey, she's giving Betty Boop. She's giving Betty Boop. Um, what do we think about this? Asking asking the audience, what do we think? Mm-hmm. I was excited mm-hmm. because I obviously Fantasia is a performance. She kept saying, honey, the stage is my home. So I was like, okay, great. We finally get to see Fantasia perform. What did we think of this look as it relates to this competition? <laughs> so this dress also had a little reveal moment. And okay. oh, I can tell yeah. that she made this look like and like put together this as like a full performance piece. Like she was very committed to the character the entire time. At one mm-hmm. point, the um the mic just kind of was wrapped around her neck and was dangling, like, yes. like kind of insinuating that she killed herself maybe i don't know and that's how she died like right. struggling you know like starlet oh, um, that right. was performing at the hotel maybe like she got murdered know, like, there. so i could see the character mm. also love her eye makeup in this it's very <laughs> like right the, the picture on netflix of the thing she is just a giant all, like a white <laughs> circle around her eyes i said <laughs> love it love it 
And, Let's get um, into it. She looks great. I will say, like, just everyone standing there, this looks minimal. <laughs> to say right. the least. That's the problem. It's just a little it too just, simple. It just isn't striking enough. It because if you're gonna have a reveal, I feel like the reveal before and after should be starkly different. I just don't know if it was because if the before the reveal, if there was like a gown, maybe like it was mm. a longer dress, and then she revealed into this shorter thing that she could dance in, that would have been like sickening. I I would like be like yes, but. I only knew that there was a reveal because she did the, you know, the reveal. Um, no, totally. So I just feel like it could have been grander for the sake of, you know, impact. She looks gorgeous. She looks gorgeous. She looks gorgeous. And she always um, will. Always, she always will. will. Um, but, you know, they did say to her on the main stage, they were like, Fantasia, you're safe, but my darling dear... We need you to be a little darker. We need to see a little more gnarl, which is what I was. We need to show. We need to show them the drag is dangerous. <laughs> yeah, we need to show people that drag is dangerous to children, um, and we need you to be the person to do it. Um, <laughs> and she was like, "Okay, let's do it." So I cannot wait to see what she does next week. Yeah. Um, and I think starting now, I really do think starting next week, Fantasia is going to be like, "Oh, okay, that's what you want. I got it for you." So, um. You know, this was her drag in the hotel, and it was similar to what I was saying. I was like, you know, she was the singer at the hotel, but it's hard to do because it's like, okay, yeah, you're killed with your microphone. It's hard. It's a tough one, you know? Yes. I do think she looks good, and I wouldn't send her home. Okay, say that. She does look great. And again, another week where there's not really a rotten look in the bunch. Like, totally. So far, yeah. Really, no rotten looks in the bunch at all. No. Like, which amazing like this cast is just right. amazing so it's just nitty-gritty it's you know it's it's a it's, it's a tough cast it's a tough group of uh, it's a tough group of ghouls to compete against yeah and it's you know getting it the shit's getting gaggy it really is um, honey organic yeah is um receptionist question mark <laughs> I was like, are you the elevator? Like, I'm not quite sure um, what character he is. Yeah. I feel like he is the Hellraiser hotel manager. That's what I was saying. I was saying he gives me Cenobite. Yeah, it's like the Cenobite hotel kind of feeling. Well, you've been saying that he gives Cenobite every episode, though. Every episode. <laughs> but he just said Hellraiser, so I was like, see, I'm not crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, no, I, I mean, his drag definitely gives Cenobite. It's just, like, I feel like this look, it's the classic orgotic we love. I just feel like he was like, okay, hotel, I'm going to throw on a suit. It's going to be lovely. <laughs> right. I, I feel like that's what happened. <laughs> and there's, like, a baby or a person that's on top of his headpiece. Right, I was like, also, what is that? It, oh, it, there's it's like a little person like yeah, manipulating so maybe him. Yeah, the elevator. You know what? Um, he is the hotel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe he is the maybe he is the hotel, and he also has this key during the performance where he like swallows a key. Right. So, like, I feel like this is like a receptionist type character, or even like a hotel itself. I just think that this maybe a little overthought. I, I just, how many fingers am I holding up? Right. It's it's either it's either overthought or underthought. It's like either sure. one of the two. <laughs> and I think it just I don't I don't know exactly what. Here here's the thing. If I were to see this in Orgotic's feed or when I see Orgotic like you know up out and about at a gig, if I saw yeah. this, I would have no qualms. I would be like sickening. I don't care if I don't get the full story. If you explain it to me, that's great. I love it. I love the artistry. It's just. In a in a setting like Dragula, where it's a competition that you do your drag specifically to a challenge that you're presenting to the judges, it is kind of important that people know what it is. It, it is kind of important. I agree. Um, so in that sense, I, I I do not know what this is. I don't know what it is, but it's cool, what and I love the scrappy do sort of very fuckable. Okay, say that. <laughs> Orgotic. Very. Okay. 
let's dive on to Satana. Let's look at this. This for me was very hotel. Okay, wait. Oh, Jesus. Really fast. Let's edit. Um, Satana, Satana. You know, I was getting hotel. I was getting, you know, vintage from her. Um, like, obviously, like a showgirl, show performer that is performing at the hotel, has this, like, gorgeous, um, has this, like, you know, is it 20s? Is it, like, 10s, 20s? Probably, is, is, yeah, like, this makeup, prohibition. Yeah, 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 this, like, downturn, um, like, coquette makeup uh, with their strangle marks on her oh. neck. Oh! Mm. See, I'm looking so at this one either, clip and... Either she killed herself or she was killed by a jealous um peer or mm, you know jealous. fantasia I, killed her I, I could i could easily right. imagine a story with this person um centering it and i thought also had like a prop that had um a contract with the hotel that she was performing i mean it, it was it, it was giving beautiful. very like yeah um like kind of like that character in a uh, repo meg Repo the genetic you know rock about? opera, Re of the, course, Blind yeah, Mag. That, yeah, 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 Mag, Mag, yeah, yeah that, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. it was kind of giving that. Sarah Brightman. Mm -hmm. Sure, uh, yeah, she stabs her eyes out. Yeah, she looks She looks great. It's, um, it is... Sorry. No, you're fine, sweetie. Um, I just feel like, because she looks great, to me, the dress looks not too, like, off the rack, up to me. And she fits the challenge, and we kind of, you know, kind of get exactly what she's supposed to be right off the bat, which not all of these performers hit those three marks. It's true. So totally. I just 100. feel like this is not, this is not bottom worthy in any sense. I feel Here's, like, no, no, I don't think it's bottom worthy. I just feel like the boulets are really harsh on Satana this season, like sure. just completely. And, I can see Satana getting discouraged from it, which makes me like, you know, ache for her because that's my sister. And I feel like if we can argue that this is kind of off the rack, we can also argue that Orgotic Suit looks like oh, totally, right. totally. a regular, yeah. regular, regular it's, suit that you yeah. could get. It's the weird balance of like, is this working for this challenge in this competition? would I be gagged to see this out at a club? Or like, would I be gagged to see this if I did it? You know what I mean? Like amongst other performers. So it's very that. Like, whereas like Organic's character is just like so wild and over the top. And Agreed. kind of novel too. Right. Like, at, like, like it's not something that you see all the time. All the time. Yeah. I think that's Definitely. what it is. Like Satana, I'm just like, cool, a drag queen. And it feels very like something I could and would see out at like, some party in new york and i would be like oh you look great but up against somebody like orgotic where i'm like whoa what the fuck you know what i mean like it's a it's hard to be the like well do you is exactly it's more it's yeah. the impact aspect of it that's it's a uh, it's weird because you know is are we are we taking that into consideration i don't know i mean definitely that's because true. like uh, dragula is also a lot of the times about self-branding right and if you can differentiate yourself in that way it's definitely a strength and i agree and i feel like orgotic does that very 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 successfully like there's hasn't been a performer like orgotic in any drag tv show um so i feel like it definitely helps in any way to like separate yourself completely from other contestants i agree um, let's move on to Jarvis Hammer. What did you think of Jarvis Hammer's look? And this is, you know, sort of his challenge. Looks awesome. I love it. Yeah, I like it. And then I love the shout out to Salem because, hello, I love Salem. Said Rip Salem on the um, briefcase. You know, we said, I guess Jarvis loves the color blue, is always doing the blue thing. Um, but this really does, the, the challenge screams Jarvis. So... Um, it all makes sense for me, you know? It does, and I wouldn't expect Jarvis to do any other color in this challenge specifically. I'm just really waiting to see any other color on Jarvis. I, right. <laughs> like, exactly. Every single, and I mean every single look that we've seen Jarvis do this season was very monochrome. Uh-huh. And in this pale blue color. And I get that his drag character is perpetually that color. I just feel like 
in a different setting, especially in a competition like Dragula, where your adaptability to the challenge is so important, I just wish that he would, even maybe with the outfit, kind of go like a completely different route. Sure. No, totally. Like um, your 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 like your makeup can be that, but then give us something else, color story wise, clothing wise. Otherwise, I think I think that's because I look at this outfit and it's really cool and it fits the challenge and everything. But if I look back at all the looks that Jarvis has done this season, it kind of blends in in my it head. It does. Um, I agree with that. Just because of the color story, it's all very categorically different looks. It's just just because of the cal- color. Um, it kind of blends all in for me. Um, so that's like my only thing. And the Blaze pointed out that the moment that his hat kind of fell off during fell the performance, um, Threw he kind of checked out. But even like the clip, because here's the thing, Dragula with the performance-based challenges is a little struggle uh, when it comes to the viewers because we see the performance edited on and we get like a few selected clips of these performers each and we don't fully get because i didn't really fully get that jarvis was checked out of the performance or anything like w- watching the like i right. thought he was doing great he was like doing a little shtick like he was like you know booping around like it, 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 it looked great booping. but yeah it you know and then when they're criticizing him they show all these clips of him kind of fumbling around right right Um, we didn't see any of that we didn't see any of that so we are completely going off of these few clips and then boule's words to make a judgment which i think in dragula context at least gives them kind of whatever power they want to like send whoever they want home or you know send whoever they want in the bottom they really could do whatever with that because even as performers we do perform and we don't get to see other people perform and we have no idea how well we did lucky for you this challenge is perfect for your drag aesthetic but we are waiting to see something else probably i think and he has that key honey let's move on to neo hoodoo because my darling I have no idea what this is. I mean, like, I can make up my own story. I What I got was, like, a, you know, a bride. There's a bride, and she smashed her face through a mirror, but then also has a knife to stab herself in the eye to carve an occult symbol, and, you know, she's ready to throw the bouquet. There's a lot going on, which is something I like about Neo Hoodoo's outfits. Like, I love people yes. that I've, I've been watching it with. are like, oh, she needs to edit. I'm like, oh, I love how much is going on. I think it's so exciting. <clears throat> This one, I have no idea. It isn't as clear cut as somebody walking forward and me being like, you're the singer, you're the this, you're the that. I have no idea what's going on. Absolutely obsessed with it. Oh, it's amazing. And I feel, I, I, I kind of understand Neo Huda's perspective when building this um, package, I think, because when you're preparing for a competition like this, you, especially if you're a very look-based performer, and if yep. your strong suit is going to be a looks in the runway, you want to you want every look to be a showstopper. You want every look to have all the details and the fine details, and you want every look to have the most giant silhouettes, and you want everything to be a showstopper. So it at least if you fail some type of way in the challenges, you at least have a very grand look to kind of support you, right? So yeah, I, I understand Neo in that sense. Um, I think again. This look is very like Trey didn't like the session, so he had got at me, but I rose from exactly. the ashes and I'm ready for the <laughs> runway. It's, 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 I feel like it's, you know, how is this hotel? Right, it's very kitchen <laughs> you know? sink. Yes. Maybe she is a draw, like a painting that was on the wall that came to life, maybe. Oh. Um, or as you said, you know, bride who got married at the in the hotel, but the groom didn't like the session, so he had gutted her. You know, right? It, it, so on and so forth. Unclear. <laughs> Unclear. From Beautiful girl. though, absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful, it looks like a, vin- a vin- little vignette, <laughs> and there's like all this things happening. I love the frame. Yeah, coming out of her chest. It's so cool. It's so cool to look at. I'm like, uh, it's an amazing character. I don't character. know what it means. I have no idea. I what's don't going care. <laughs> beautiful right, gowns, like, gorgeous gowns. Beautiful gowns, beautiful mirrors. Is that beautiful that blood. wow factor again? There it is, though. Yeah, what we were saying, read like Satana versus Orgotic. It's like 
this thing comes forward and you're like, holy shit, that's that wow factor that you wanted. But I have no idea how it relates to hotel. Do I care? I don't know. You know, it's it's that weird thing. Like, um, am I going to choose this look over some like somebody like Satana's who like is a very clear hotel guest? I don't know. Right. To me, this one is more aesthetically pleasing. And this one looks more, let's say, expensive. This one looks more um, fleshed out. You know, I don't know. It's also the the colors are so graphic on stage, white and red. Oh, yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Very totally. saturated. Yeah. yeah. So I loved it. I had a fun time with this run. I believe that's the end of the contestants. Yes. Honey, and then we get and to get to, we, we see the performance. And they're jumping and kicking and twirling. All and over. Yes. Any standouts and for you when it comes to performances? This was a hard one because for me, this is a weird song. And okay, I'll just say it. I was recently putting together a show that was very um, jazzy in this style of music. And I tried to choose music that like felt upbeat and cool. And I could do something with performance wise that felt fun. And I think this is a hard song to do on such a big stage. It this is. song feels like something that you would want to do on a small stage and it could be very, everything could be very small and, and, you know, stunning, but to have to take up the whole stage with the song, that's like, like, it's like, what are you going to do? Yeah. It's very, um, I will say so performers like JK, uh -huh. um, really just use the entire stage, skipping sure. around and did amazing portraying the song. So I think it is possible. It is just a tough, difficult. You know, yeah. This would have worked better on a Titan stage. Let's put it that way. Exactly. Someone exactly. should have brought out a little soapbox to stand on. Totally. Or, yeah, exactly. So this, you know, it's a little weird. And and like you said, it was hard to tell with the edit. I was sort of like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um. So I wish I was able to like see the performances, but it is hard. To me, even um, watching this edit, the standout was JK. I would say that too. I think J. Clay, JK was the clear winner because it was aesthetically pleasing to me. I also fully got hotel. There was a bell, ding, you know. You got it. You got it. You know, you so it. you got it. The brains were there. Oh, yeah, yeah. yes, exactly. So I think that was... It. Now, do you agree with this? There, Okay, well, of course, Jarvis... The hammer says, I'm casting the curse, and you, my lovely organic, are going to be up for extermination. Um, along the most with dramatic possible, <laughs> along with Satana and um, anaphylactic. Anna. Now, do you Anna. agree with this bottom? <laughs> do you agree with this bottom two slash three, or what do you think? I would have okay, so honey, I know you put post on Twitter, you said, I have thoughts. What I, I are do have thoughts. I do have thoughts. Tell me. Um, I think I, I I'm assuming that it was gonna be bottom two and organic right. just kind of got piled on top of it. Right. To to be honest, I probably would have, and this is, you know, I, I, I love her dearly. I just feel like, and there was no way that Fantasia was going home. If sure. she were to do the extermination, and if the storyline is that Fantasia, you've been playing it safe, let's step it up. That's because what well, that's what Blay said, right? Right. That's a that's when I to be like hello. Storyline wise, a great place to throw in her first extermination. Sure. You wanted and Fantasia I, to be covered in rats. Yes, and that would have been. I mean, visual wise, that would have been awesome too. You know, her like right. You know. And uh, I think it could have been Anna and Fantasia. I did prefer Satana's showgirl look over um, Fantasia's showgirl look. Sure. Uh, personally. And uh, I think that would have been my choice. Uh, Orcotic being there. Obviously, love Orcotic's look. Just just outside of the challenge, Orcotic's look is one of my favorites in this, you know, the entire thing. But sure. with the challenge considered, I just have no idea how this fits into the challenge um right. so i think orgotic being there does make sense regardless of the keys i'll tell you who i wanted to be there covered in rats this girl right here 
I wanted to be there because let me tell you, these were not subway disgusting New York City rats. And let me tell you, as somebody who lives at the Chipol- Chipotle that was shut down because they were infested with cat sized rats. You know, oh, I'm not a rats big- eating cats. <laughs> rats eating cats. You know, I'm not I'm not a big fan of the New York rats, but um those rats looked clean. They looked taken care of. And I said, I would have loved to have had a play date with some rats. I would have been like, honey, eat some cheese off me. Sure. You know, um, eat the cheese in me. <laughs> oh, Wednesday channel was like, oh, it's going up my pussy. <laughs> Literally, LOL. I said, honey, but honey. Yeah, Satana seemed very defeated, and I think she, like you were saying, I think she was discouraged, and we've all been there, you know? We've all been there at that point where you're just like, I'm out, you know? Like, even if I'm not actually out, like, I'm out right now. And don't take it personally. Tell them fuck off. Yeah, but, like, I get where she's coming from, especially as a person who's done this twice, because in a Dragula setting, it's not like lip-sync for your life, where... You can go out, twirl your ass off, and, like, flip it if you want to. Even in Drag Race, like, even if you do really well in the lip sync, sometimes they keep another person because they want to keep them more. You know, it happens. Right. It's just, in an extermination, there's no clear way for you to go in and flip this over, like, in a way that you would in, like, lip sync for your life kind of scenario. Right, so exactly. she's looking around being like, okay, Anna's being flown out from the UK, and they want to keep, like, you know, they, like, and then, you know, oh, Orgotic's just there because, you know, she's, like, making the puzzle pieces work in her mind and, like, realizing that she's probably going to go home this episode no matter what, which is a very right. discouraging, depressing feeling. And I, I like, definitely get that. It, it's just, you know, hard being there it's obviously not a good look to like seeming like you're giving up but like i i do 100 percent understand where she's coming from right totally <laughs> you know who you look like right now you look like um the boss in the movie elf oh the guy who like runs the the like look at your face like do, do you get it like yeah He's the guy that's like, <laughs> you know, like the one who's like, you know, he's freaking out. I forget. Maybe I'm making Elf. What up. about with the hair too, though? Oh, I did not know that there was a top. Oh, pony. get in, <laughs> get into this top pony. Yeah, hello, honey. I had you a fabulous. Like you could to- be a, what? You look like you could be a flapjack character. Period. A what? <laughs> a flapjack character. Do you know that flapjack. cartoon? Flapjack. No. <laughs> Yes, you it's do. Like, I'm gonna look it it's, up. Though. It's very, it's very giving this. It's giving, it's giving whatever the hell Uh-oh. this is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. the hairline. Look how far back it is. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, Satana unfortunately is exterminated. No. <laughs> R.I.P. My sister. Um, I know. We love her. She gave good drama. Yes, yeah, she she oh. knew reality TV. She knew what we wanted, and I thought she was doing great. And she always served face. She always Loved served face. Absolutely gorgeous. And um, I'm going to miss her. I know. But you know what? We've got many an episode left, so I cannot wait to see what these contestants bring. And uh, if you've been watching at home, you've been seeing that we are way past Matt's bedtime, and he is yawning, 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 aren't you? <laughs> that was like, honey, the girls fall asleep. But honey, Hoso, you're going to start your day? I'm about to start my day at 3.14 p.m. Did you eat breakfast yet? What do you eat breakfast? Um, What's your breakfast there? Meal. First meal of the day. I don't know if breakfast wasn't appropriate. Um, I've ate it around like one. It's eh, one brunch. Okay, brunch. Nice. Brunch. But um, I'm about to start my day, maybe clean. I love it. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, my love, this has been another episode of The Witching Hour. Thank you for joining us and having a good time with us. And we're going to see you next week on whatever um, whatever theme they throw at us. We are so excited. I'm having a blast with this freaking show. Bring it was me nice to joy. meet you. Nice to e-meet. Oh, my God. Nice to e-introduce each other. Okay, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, fabulous, honey. That was fun.